in your heart part of the word of God. And when you do this to a group of total unbelievers, they walk away with the word of God in their heart. The word of God. The word of God is where the power is. Like Lisa mentioned the other day, get the word in you. This discussion is all about the word of God. And there weren't these and vows in it. I told the story accurately but conversationally. That's the key to this kind of thing. You can do this in five minutes over a cup of coffee at Starbucks or something. Once you learn how to do it. From the literate style, where you have a list, maybe a PowerPoint and you write it out or you have an outline, to this oral style, where you focus on pictures, talk about it, and discuss it, it's a huge change. Now, the conversational style is what we do all the time. Somehow, we've been trained, and there's nothing wrong with literate style, but we've been trained that when we talk about the Bible, it has to be this way. It doesn't. You can't actually talk about the story of the Bible like Jesus did all the time, sharing the things around him. I need four volunteers. I'm going to ask Teresa. Can you be one of my volunteers? I'm looking right over here, and then I need another volunteer right here. some statistics to share with you from us trying to make it easy. What's, what's the literacy rate in the United States? How many people, what percent can read and write, do you think? Give me a number. Yes. 98. 98%. That is the public literacy rate in the United States. Woo! With a little asterisk. <laughs> and down below it says, I think it says 85% functionally literate. What does that mean? Well, in 1993 and 2003, these huge studies Involving tens of thousands of people were done in the United States on literacy. They found, but we're going to just look at the executive summary. Okay, four groups of people. The first group we would call the non literate group. Yeah, Lisa. Lisa is going to represent the non literate group. These are people that basically can't read and write. However, if they see, they see a 57 freeway and a 55 freeway, they can tell the difference. Or if they see New York and they see Budapest, they might be able to tell the difference. That's about it. Some of them can sign their name, some can't. Okay, that's the non literate group. Then the next group is the functionally non literate. Okay, and the functionally non literate are the people that can actually read Jesus went to the town. And if you give them a chapter in the Bible to read and then ask them what did it mean, those, those two groups. Then the third group is what we would call preferred oral learners. These people read just fine, write just fine, have advanced degrees, um, but they'd rather learn in an oral style. So these are people, if they have a new app for their cell phone, they'd rather have somebody show them how to use it than read the instructions. Okay? And then, <laughs> and then we have the highly literate. These are the people that would rather read the instructions. And in the United States, by the way, highly literate people, very important. That's why we have Bibles, Bible study aids, all kinds of wonderful things. Very important that we have highly literate people. They prefer to read the book. Everybody else would rather go see the movie. Okay? So in the United States, According to these two studies, the non-literate is 14% of the population is not literate. They don't read enough. An additional 29% are functionally non-literate in the United States. This is adults, 16 and older. Okay, so math major. 14 plus 29 is how many? 43% of the population in the United States, if you tell them Read your Bible and pray. Can't do it. Yeah. Cannot do it. Okay. The next group is the preferred oral learners. In the United States, that's 44% of the population. They can 
learn just fine in oral style. They can also learn by literate style, but they prefer oral. Oral style first. <laughs> and oil game. So what's that total percent there? 87% learn best in an oral style. That's like what we did. That's like telling the story versus the list of stuff. Okay, and that leaves us what percent? 13%. This 13% can learn anyway. Doesn't matter. And they're just as happy literate or oral. Thank you very much. By the way, of these four people here, who do you think represents the group of people who write the Bible college curriculum? The literate. Well, if you pay the uh, preferred oral learner enough, they'll do it. <laughs> but usually it's the literate. How about uh, mission strategies? Literate. Now, if in the United States, which is interesting, who do you think it is in Canada? What do the numbers look like in Canada? That's the country right above the United States. 100%. They're identical. Canadians could not believe it. So they completely redid the test again. <laughs> the same numbers. And in Western developed Europe, same numbers. What do you think it is in the less developed nations? More or less, right? In fact, in the in the 1040 window, you're all familiar with the 1040 window, right? Probably. Okay. Yeah. Easily 80% need oral style. There's no other way. And that's the way to communicate to them. And I could give you stories. Well, I'll give you a story. Oral, the idea is that even in a highly literate society where we really provide great opportunities for schooling and people get to school, oral style is something we ought to consider. And what I was hoping to do today is give you a little picture of what an oral style Bible study is like. Nobody here had to read the Bible. No one had to write any notes down. And when you go from here for the next month or two, as you think on this story, God's going to keep revealing some things to you. You will get deep in the Word of God without having those literacy skills. In fact, some of the deepest thinkers are oral style thinkers. And we all know about Einstein and Frank Mann, right? He still fit his mold. He was pretty smart. But a friend. Friend in Africa, who uh, in his village was the only believer. He's a Muslim. This is a Muslim country, and he came to Christ. Muslim-based believer, and he went to a workshop. You can learn how to do this in a workshop. It takes a minimum of 20 hours to really get to the point where you can tell a Bible story and not just crash and burn and feel like oh, I don't know how to do it. It just takes a while because there's 38 paradigm shifts. Notice I tried not to tell you any answers. I always ask you. You guys didn't want to discuss a lot. You're kind of um, really nervous or something. But other groups will just get going and just you know start talking back and forth. That's we encourage that. We call that cross talk, where it's like I'm not even here. You're just having this discussion among yourself. Great. That's where you learn. So um, this fellow went to one of these workshops, learned how to do all this, came back to the village, and at, in this village in the bush in Africa, they sit around at night and tell stories. They do it all day. So he had arrived, and uh, they said, well, you've been away for a while. You have a story to tell. So he told them a story. He told them uh, the story of blind Bartimaeus. And you may remember the story with this guy on the side of the road, the Jer outside of Jericho, and he cries out, Jesus, son of David. Well, that was the messianic term he was using. God have mercy on me. And Jesus actually stopped and healed the guy. So he's telling that story like we did, asking questions. And somebody said, you mean Kisi? I think that's how you pronounce the name properly in their language as it appears in the Quran. He's a prophet in the Quran. He actually
actually stop for a blind beggar? And so the story tells the girl, what does the story say? And they all agree, can't have the girl. And then a little while later, somebody else said, did you know Jesus has actually healed a blind beggar? And they all agreed, that's what happened in the story. So this guy said, do you think he would turn around and heal me? And that opened the door for this guy to share the gospel. And that night, 27 men accepted Christ, and there's now a church of over 40 people in that little village, just from that one story. There was a, a lady that went to training in another African country, actually a, a place that was and she worked in the city, whatever the name of the big city is, I just, I don't know how you pronounce it, <laughs> but anyway, totally illiterate, never has read anything, but she went to one of these trainings, because you can go to the training, and you don't need to read or write to learn how to do this. So she went back to um, to work, and she's Muslim background believer. And over the next year, riding the bus to and from work and that kind of thing, she read 45 women, Muslim women, to the Lord, telling them one story, the Mark and Mary story, the same old story she knew. And so we have exactly one minute left on the clock. And are there any questions? Website is simply the story.org. There's all kinds of free resources. There's a handbook on how to do all this you can download for free. Uh, and indeed, we have around the world, there's 30 or 40 oral Bible schools. That means Bible schools, no pens and papers, no, no homework, right? You have homework assignments. What you do is learn 300 stories through the whole Bible, from Genesis to Revelation. And when you're, and that takes a year. When you're done, you're done. And you graduate. And those people then go out and be pastors. Now they have 300 stories. That's two stories a week. That's several years of sermons that they know. They go out and teach. Uh, so on the website, you can find all that information. Download it. Uh, I encourage you to look at it. But uh, there's also audio. You can hear a story being done. Joy, thanks for coming today. Have a great afternoon.